Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with an awesome new knife consult video for you on the Brian Nadeau Evo Typhoon. If you go back on my channel, you will see that I've already done a video on the prototypes for this knife, the Brian Nadeau Evo Typhoon, and that's because my friend Brian has made quite a number of really awesome knives and I've owned a couple of them and this was super exciting to uh, see that he was coming out with a full-size mid-tech production knife uh, really a mid-tech knife whatever you want to call it from Riot Knives. Um, Brian is a single person shop and he's had a hard time keeping up with demand and so it was an obvious solution that his great designs would go to a production house. But Brian is very selective. Actually, for quite a long time on his podcast, he was vocally anti-China and the Chinese manufacturers. But I think that in reality, in the reality of today's world, for bringing a high-end production pocket knife into the market, pretty much the only way to go is with these high-end Chinese production shops if you want to keep costs down for the end user. Certainly there are some places in the U.S. that are doing a great job with some other builds, but some of them tend to be a bit more expensive. This one was done by Riot Knives, and it's really exciting for me to now show you the full production model of this after I had the uh, prototypes in hand. So I liked <clears throat> the prototypes so much that I ended up buying one of these. It was absolutely a steal of a deal at the $299 that he advertised when he first released this knife. I believe that they're gonna sell for about $350 now uh, as they become more available, for, but for the first drop, for those who entered early, he gave a substantially lower price of $299. That may have even upset their folks over at Riot, but uh, that's really neither here nor there. It was very exciting that I was able to get a knife with M390 titanium frame and Brian's signature detent and styling uh, for $299. So really exciting. So this knife, uh, if you watch the prototype video, is a very, very close uh, knife to the actual prototype. It is almost impossible to tell the, the differences uh, between these two knives, but I'll try to highlight them a very small amount. They're really only two small things really just the clip and the blade grind but uh, other than that this is just as good maybe even a little bit better what i've noticed in the couple of knives that i've gotten to handle that are riot pre-production prototypes when it comes across uh into the final production model it's always a little bit crisper a little bit tighter a little bit better and this follows suit there are some things that are just a little bit cleaner um, and we'll go through all that. So let's go ahead and uh, get some vital signs on this guy. Uh, <clears throat> if you watch that first video, this may be a bit redundant for you. But in case you are unaware, this is a very full-size knife. You're getting very nearly four inches of blade. Really, you're getting 3.75 inches of blade right there with a solid 3.4 to almost 3.5 inches of cutting length. Overall length, you're coming in at just under eight and a half inches, maybe 8.4 inches right there. Your handle is coming in at 4.6 inches with an effective grip area, somewhere in the four and a quarter inch range. So it is an absolute full-size knife. I saw a few people posting today uh, that they got their knives and they saw that it was a bit bigger than they anticipated. And so I'll try to provide this again. It is a full-size knife, actually a little bit bigger than the Paramilitary 2. Down here was the para. Three, I'll bring out a big spider coat. Here is the subvert. It's not quite as big as this guy. Here is another high-end uh, sort of, I don't know if you want to call it mid-tech. This is certainly a custom version, but this is the Koenig Knives Arius. Very similar in overall size to the Arius there. Almost identical in overall dimensions right there. So it is certainly a full-size knife. Be aware of that. <clears throat> <clears throat> Some other specs. Let's take a look here at the weight. The final weight for this aspirated Japanese Tanto version is coming in at 4.52 ounces. Now, there are a bunch of different variants. If you watched my prototype video, you saw three of them on there. But there were different uh, options for the blade and the handles. I believe there were three options for the blade and three options for the handle. I chose to go with this. So let's go ahead and break this knife down anatomically and we can take a look at the Japanese Tanto style blade of M390 steel. The Japanese Tanto has this curved Tanto tip 
with the flat uh, of the blade right there. It is hollow ground at this part of the blade and flat ground at the tip. There is an American Tanto variant that has a straight line. It is a, it is a wholly different grind and a much more aggressive and acute uh, angle uh, on the Tanto tip. Very different overall grind. I preferred this one. I really like the sloping belly of this type of a blade for my EDC uses, and I think that aesthetically it looks the best. Uh, I've also had a similar blade shape on a f my two uh, mini Typhoons that I've had from Brian, and so I knew that I really liked it, and it just reminded me of his knives. Another interesting characteristic is this fuller running down the blade right here along with that hole. Unfortunately, that hole is not an effective finger flicker. Now, I'm sure there will be some of you in the community that say, hey man, I'm able to do that, uh, but I'm really not able to get my finger into this space. Well, maybe I can. Uh, maybe that'll take some practice, but it's certainly not the most elegant solution. You can get it in there. <laughs> of course, I'm able to do this on video. I practiced this before the video and I was actually not able to do it. Looks like I found it. So maybe you can actually do that, but it's not exactly the easiest or the most comfortable thing. And it, I don't believe that it's really designed to do that. Uh, but, you know, there it is. It actually does work. So it does have a fidget factor right there. So learn something new every day, they say. Anyways, what I do like is the way that it makes the blade look. I actually asked Brian if he was going to be making some of the knives with only a fuller. He actually showed one of the prototypes didn't have the hole in the blade and it just had a fuller. And I really liked the way that that looked. But he ultimately decided to go with this one. Uh, it saves a lot of weight, I'm sure, and it probably balances the blade a little bit better. Again, not designed for that flick. I'm really kind of <laughs> pushing myself to make that happen there on the video, but it is fun. It is there. Uh, what I do love is the very, very thin hollow grind that they got here. This is one of the changes that Brian asked them to do. He asked them to really grind it thinly so that it is a slicing Knife Riot is known uh, throughout the community for creating rather wedge-like knives that are rather thick behind the edge, but that look very nice. But Brian wanted a user, and he certainly got that. Both the Tanto tip and the hollow grind are very thinly done. You can actually see that uh, when you turn it up at this angle, how thin that is behind the edge. You can see how much material is taken down at the back of the grind there. Very nice. This knife features Brian's signature flipper tab. Uh, if you have seen any of his knives, he knows that he uses this for all of his knives. If you don't like larger flipper tabs or in protruding flipper tabs, you're probably not going to enjoy this. I like it personally because it works beautifully. It works every time. It's extremely comfortable and Riot has reproduced it quite nicely. Interestingly, they've included the Brian Nadeau logo on the back. Sometimes Brian includes it on the front. Perhaps he wanted to go for a clean look. That is the only marking on the blade of any kind. It is an M390 blade, but it is marked nowhere with M390. Uh, you just kind of have to know that from the get-go. So really, really nice that it is made of M390. Everyone's favorite blade steel, excellent corrosion resistance, excellent toughness, and excellent edge retention. So very good qualities. Uh... Taking a look at the way it was ground, there's a tiny bit of a smile towards the end of the edge right there. That is a Riot production thing. So, <clears throat> small area of improvement that could be perfected a little bit, perhaps. But uh, that's a very minor complaint, and that's very nitpicky. <clears throat> Moving back to the pivot, this thing is running on ceramic ball bearings caged in phosphor bronze cages. Extremely smooth action. As you can see, this uh, reminds me very much of the... Brian Nadeau knives. Brian's knives are not going to be the most fall shutty type of knives. Here I'll bring out the Koenig Arius as an example. This knife, if you're not careful, will drop shut and close on your fingers. These knives, just like these custom knives, have a small amount of resistance as you close them. I'm not saying that it's a negative thing. It is a calculated amount of resistance and it remains true in this knife. This knife is very true to the feel of the custom knives uh, and that is kept intact with the Brian Nadeau integral detent nub. The detent is milled into the steel lock bar insert as you can see here just like on Brian's custom knives and so there is a 
Brian Nadeau detent nub. Instead of a ceramic ball bearing, there is a milled ramp so that on the opening of the knife and on the closing of the knife, the blade will ramp up over the ramp and then back down uh, instead of a round ball where the detent, where most knives have a detent ball. What it creates is a very unique feeling, a single noise on opening and a single noise on closing. You'll, you'll notice if you have um, <clears throat> a knife with a ceramic detent or a steel, uh, a ball bearing detent, uh, you will hear it kind of click, double click as you're opening the knife. Here it has a unique single click sound. Uh, and I'm amazed that they have reproduced it like this. I really like that design. Uh, I know that it is proprietary to Brian, but I would like to see it utilized across the industry. I think it's a great solution to uh, a rather simple problem, very elegant fix to that problem. Uh, the Pivot hardware is has stayed the same as it was on the prototypes, this fairly nice uh, six-shooter looking piece right here. It remains the same on the back. There is a Torx to deconstruct it, so very nice. It's simple, yet it has style. Uh, I might have liked to see variants of the Pivot hardware also available for customization. Uh, it seems a bit out of place, perhaps, on my model, as there are some squares. Uh, and then this shape, it may just, it's, it's not bad, but maybe it could have been improved in some way if it was just a simple flat face instead of this on this particular model. Maybe some of the others will look better with this. Small thing, again, if you're going to get into customization on these knives, you have three blades, you have three handles, and one pivot type. So maybe, maybe think about that in the future, Brian, and no big deal, no harm, no foul. I think it looks great. I think it looks really great, just sort of a cohesion kind of a thing here. Moving back to the handles, this is really a the biggest departure from Brian's other knives. This is the Evo Typhoon. This is not the large Typhoon, the mini Typhoon, the micro Typhoon. This is the Evo. So anytime you say Evo, that means evolution. And so the knife is not like the other knives. All three of those knives, all of the regular Typhoon models have the same essential blade handle, the, the handle shape. Uh, they're just scaled from bigger to smaller. This is a totally new departure. This is a new design, and it is nothing like what the other ones look like. But what it does keep is uh, the very ergonomic design. It's much more contoured. Uh, it's a little bit, this is a little bit bigger than the Mini Typhoon. The Mini Typhoon being a three and a half inch blade and the regular Typhoon, I believe it's a four inch knife. And so this slots right there in between the full size and the mini Typhoon with its Evo-ness right here. Uh, the handles are extremely comfortable. I like the handles a lot on this knife. I like the aspirated version right here. It reminds me a lot of uh, Brian's older aspirated designs. And by older, I mean like Last year, he was doing that. Uh, his his Evo Typhoons, or his, his regular Typhoons, are full of aspirated models, and I felt that this was closer to his actual design language. The one that I think is probably the nicest is the one with the carbon fiber inlay. That one is spectacular. Much nicer in hand than it looks in any of the photos or videos that you might see online. Really doesn't do it justice. But I wanted this one because I like the hole in the blade and the hole in the handles. It was sort of a cohesion thing. Again, I really like that. Um, <clears throat> what I do like about the handles is the way that they are brought together here in the back. If you looked at the prototype video, you can actually see that these gaps were quite bad uh, on the prototypes. But you can see clearly that they tightened these gaps up completely. It is very fluid. It does not look like these have any type of... It looks like they were milled by the same piece of going straight across. Uh, it lines up very nicely. They were not lined up on the protos, so you can see, like I mentioned before, everything is tighter and crisper and a little bit better. An integrated lanyard uh, pin right here, very nice, clean, elegant. I like that. Notice also that there's no other visible hardware on the front of the knife except for the pivot. There is a screw-through construction right here integrating the pocket clip and the scale construction, so I do like that, very elegant. Nice lock bar cutout. That's not something that I normally say, but it is just kind of pretty. Very nicely done. And look how he's kept the clip away from that so that it actually works. So many people put their clip right over this thing and it just grabs your pocket. I really don't understand why people 
don't think that through. Brian clearly thought this through. Brian also departed from the Typhoons by not giving this his bent spoon-type clip that he's become famous for, maybe infamous, because of maybe some people think that they're unsightly. I personally loved it because it reminds me very much of the Spyderco style clip. Uh, it's just function above all else, but uh, he's clearly moved now to a 3D milled clip. Uh, this one is a little bit stiff, but it does work. There is enough ramp, and it is tall enough for most styles of pants. And so what are my thoughts on this knife now that it is in full production? Well, this is probably the best mid-tech that has been released as of yet in 2019. Uh, I've seen some pretty good ones coming out, but this one is probably the best. Uh, Brian really knocked it out of the park with this knife. He took his design and he really brought it into a more modern era. He gave it some more contouring, he gave it a bigger size, he gave it some new options, and he's allowed now, he's expanded his own mind and allowed himself to work with a Chinese manufacturer to bring excellent quality products. Brian should not be disappointed in any way in the products that Riot are putting out for him. These are fantastically done. Amazing fit and finish. Take a look at the centering on this knife. Really, really cool the way that that semi-integral appearance works right there. Take a look at the spine of the knife and how neat that looks. Just very nicely done. The detent is crisp. It has Brian's detent. It's ergonomic. The blade is incredible. Super sharp. M390 with a beautiful grind. I love this Japanese Tanto. Honestly, this is a home run. Absolutely, this is a home run. This is as good as any production knife will be this year. Uh, and at about $350, I mean, don't buy a ZT, buy this, you know. <laughs> This is probably better than, you know, like a Spyderco Drunken, which I'm going to actually have on the channel here coming pretty soon, so we'll actually put that to the test. But you would be hard-pressed to find a better custom mid-tech sort of proposition for about $350 out there. This is a really excellent knife with a lot of excellent features from a guy that really is working hard to make a great product and did this against his will initially and has really made the most of it. So quite an interesting story for quite an interesting knife. I really like it. Highly recommended. You will not be disappointed if you pick up one of these Evo Typhoons. So let me know what you guys think of the knife down below in the comments. Thank you for watching another video about the Evo Typhoons. And as always, guys, this is Dr. Frunky saying take care.